Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's no name back at again with another Giants video slash Giants update video. First and foremost, thank you for all the kind words in the comment section yesterday. It means a lot to me. I hope you guys are also being safe, washing your hands, wearing your masks when needed. You know, hope that you all get out of this situation safely. And let's get into what I want to talk about today. Now, yesterday, the Giants placed the unrestricted free agent tender on Marcus Golden. Marcus Golden was, of course, our best edge and pass rusher. He was just the best guy for us last year to get to the quarterback. Had a 10-sack season, coming off of a ACL injury from uh, 2016, actually. And he was playing on a really cheap one-year, like, 3.75 million dollar contract which he definitely outperformed under James Betcher system now we all know as Giants fans that's the kind of the the catch 22 with Marcus Golden when he's in the James Betcher system he's one of the best pass rushers you could ask for the guy has really good numbers he gets 10 sacks he gets quarterback pressures he gets quarterback hurries all his numbers actually are very comparative to Nick Bosa's of last year um they both had around 10 sacks they both had around had around 44 45 QB pressures around 14 or 15 QB hurries so when he's in that better 3 4 under scheme you know that relies heavily on blitzes and whatnot you know very aggressive scheme golden is actually one of the better if not one of the best pass rushers in the league but we have never seen him shine outside that Marcus Golden system Marcus Golden outside of that James Betcher system I mean you might as well call it the Marcus Golden system because when he's in it he's the best well we also haven't seen him healthy and in another system when Betcher left uh, the Cardinals Golden was injured and he was taking a whole year to recover from that injury so we don't know exactly when healthy how good Golden is outside the system and I've said this before I wanted to bring back Golden for two reasons one he was the best pass rusher we had last year and two because the Giants don't have a set scheme, and I still believe they're gonna be in a 3-4 under because that's the players that we have right now. That's the personnel that we have right now. You're gonna you're not gonna come in and force this personnel to play in a 4-3 scheme or something like that. You know, just throwing that out there. They're used to playing in a certain scheme and they're they're kind of built for that 3-4 base scheme at least. So it's not like it's gonna be completely different despite what the coaches might say. Now I do believe it's gonna be versatile in the sense that sometimes you are gonna get a couple 4-3 looks. Maybe even a couple four six looks and whatnot thrown in there throughout the season, but because it's going to be a versatile scheme, I see uh, no reason why Golden can't thrive in it because his he's going to shine somehow whenever we're in, a, we're in a three four package, and also we have we have better secondary and better linebacking core than we did last year, and that when your defense is better in the secondary and the linebacker, everything like I've been continuously continuously saying it's a big machine. The better cogs you have, the more oiled up they are, the better the machine works. We have a lot better parts on the defense this year than we did last year, especially in the secondary. The secondary is really heavily upgraded at the safety position and at the cornerback position. These guys, all they need to do is, you know, blanket the oncoming wide receivers and oncoming tight ends a little bit more. And it gives more time for the pass rushers to do their thing and try to get through the offensive line. Get a hurry, get a pressure, get a sack even. And I think that's gonna help out Golden also. But the main reason I wanted to bring him back is because he was a great locker room guy. And I actually have a quote pulled up here from Joe Judge uh, when he was on WFAN this Tuesday morning where he said, obviously we think he's a talented player. He's been a great locker room guy. I have a lot of respect for him from afar. I haven't worked in him with person yet. Now, of course, this is true. Judge, you know, unfortunately with the whole Corona uh, pandemic situation, he hasn't exactly gotten to meet any of the Giants players. He hasn't worked with any of these players before, except for Nate Ebner, who he had experience with in, uh, in New England Patriots, where he was a special teams coach. But he does have contact with these players, and he obviously has contact with the remaining coaches that were still on from last year, the personnel within the building that still remain from last year. And Golden was always a great locker room guy. He was a leader in the locker room and he was always very uh, kind of quiet spoken, soft spoken, never really said anything, you know, to the media, whether it was good or bad, just kind of kept to himself and did his job. And I really liked that about Golden. And he always wanted to come back to the Giants. Before the season even ended last year, Golden was, you know, on record saying that he would love to be back with the Giants. This is where he sort of revived his career a little bit and had 
his best year since that 2015 season where he was like top 10 in sacks. So, I mean, if I was him, I would want to come back to the Giants too. It's just that they like, couldn't for some reason get on the same page about a contract. Now, this unrestricted free agent tender, which is a very smart move, by the way, he's going to be earning, if he sticks with it, 110% of his salary in 2019, which brings it up to $4.12 million a year. Now then, if I was Marcus Golden, I personally would try and sign with another team because despite what you say, you could argue that, yes, he's scheme dependent and all that. I think we should give him a chance. You could you could definitely argue all that. I just think that um, he outplayed a $4 million contract, which is what he's going to get next year. He's definitely worth more than that. I don't think he's worth more than maybe $10, $12 million. But if I'm him, I'm, I would be out there trying to get to, onto a team for maybe eight or $9 million. Teams, however, have been scarce in the Golden Hunt. We've had no type of information or report or rumor linking Golden to any other team in the league. It's as if they're avoiding him, maybe for the same reason that people think that he's scheme dependent and they don't want to take on a guy that's scheme dependent and pay him that much money. I personally would, just because I think that he's going to be motivated now more than ever. You know, in his eyes, you could look at it that he just came back. He just proven himself again. He was just the best defensive player on a team, you know, that really didn't have that many defensive standouts. He was the first person on that team to have 10 sacks in five years. The first linebacker on the team to have 10 sacks since Lawrence Taylor in 1990. That's not something small. That's not that's not something that you just gloss over. So if I was Marcus Golden, I'd be looking for somewhere else. But the reason I love this move, and I'm sure you guys have heard it by now, with the unrestricted tender, if he doesn't sign it, he retains the ability to sign with another team until July 22nd. And after that date, he has until the Tuesday following the 10th weekend of the season to sign with the Giants. Now, obviously I don't expect this guy to, let's say no teams comes up to him and no teams give him offer. I don't expect him to hold out until the 10th week of the season to sign with the Giants. No, you're gonna wanna get that money no matter what. You're gonna wanna play no matter what. So I definitely expect him to sign with the Giants if you know no other team offers him a deal but if another team does offer him a deal they come around they give him like eight million dollars apparently the giants are entitled to a compensation pick if we lose golden because of because we put this unrestricted free agent tender on him and this is where you know just the inner workings of joe judge's minds amaze me because this is not something that i think would happen if let's say we still had pat Shermer on the team as our head coach or if dave gettleman was fully in control of free agency and uh the draft and all that because if this was just Dave Gellman, in my opinion, he lets him go because we're not losing anything. We signed him on a one year, $3.75 million deal. There's nothing to lose if he walks away. But with this tender, if he stays, we're getting him on a complete discount of just 4 million bucks. And then if he goes, we still got a pick in return. Now, I don't think it's gonna be a third round compact. I think it might be like a fifth rounder, maybe less than that, but I'm gonna just say in the ballpark of a fifth rounder, but hey, we got Darius Slayton and Ryan Conley in the fifth. This year, we got uh, Shane Lemieux in the fifth, who's possibly our starting center coming up this year. This is a very smart move. That's a win-win situation, no matter which way you look at it. And I just gotta say, I hope he stays on. I would like for Golden to stay on. He was somebody that I wanted the Giants to go out and get. Um, if he stays on for $4 million, that's really amazing. Cause I thought we were gonna have to pay him maybe around 10 million, but I like Golden, man. I like him as a player. I like him as a person. I would love for him to come back on here. And really, I want him to prove everybody wrong and have a good season because I, I feel like he can be successful in the versatile system that we're implementing just because of the fact that the team the defense as a whole is better than it was last year he's not going to be really the only pass rusher on the team you know hopefully Kyler Fackrell has a good season or or even Lorenzo Carter or O'Shane Zimenez but I know for a fact we're going to get a lot of pressures and a lot of sacks from that secondary so that's going to help him out as well that's what I got for you all today my thoughts on Marcus Golden um Later on in the week, I'm going to make one about the defense and why I think it's being built the Patriot way. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that phrase in itself. Stay tuned. I'm out. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.